In this week's installment of Weather Extra, we're going to talk about the 800-pound gorilla in the room, which actually looks really pretty when you put it on a map. Take a look at an image of the globe right now, which shows us sea surface temperature anomalies. We're in a La Nina. Haven't been talking about that a lot this winter, but it has most likely been one of the bigger influences on this winter than most other things have been, usually El Nino or La Nina. When one of them reigns in the Pacific, when one of them controls and is the dominant feature, it has a large impact on California's weather. Not every time, but usually. See all the blue out here stretching across the equator? That's showing you water that's cooler than average along the Pacific. That's La Nina. There's another way to look at this. I want to show you what it looks like if you average out each week from the last several weeks. You see the dates ticking by there. So we're just tracking those sea surface temperatures along the equator to see how they're behaving from week to week over about the last month and a half. And it's been very steady, cooler than average temperatures. There's South America over there, by the way. The equator sits right up about here. And you can see that is the zone we look at to track La Nina or El Nino, above average or below average sea surface temperatures. So La Nina is important. And if we take a look at what La Nina typically means for us in terms of how the storm track gets affected for the remainder of what's left of our chance, our rain season is rapidly closing. There's a lot of pressure on March to make up for the fact that January and February didn't give us much rain. If we look at what the average La Nina has done for us for these last few months of the year, March, April, and May, and we can get real specific with La Nina statistics, we're only looking at those months here. We're not looking at the winter as a whole. We're specifically looking at the last little gasp of winter, March, April, and May. How does precipitation typically pan out for that time frame? There we are. You see a little bit of green there. There's the key. So our takeaway from this image is when you've got a La Nina in the Pacific, the last few months of winter, you usually do okay. You get a little bit above average for rainfall. Now that is highly overgeneralized. Remember this map because I'm going to show you two other forecasts for what the last few weeks of winter are likely going to be using high-resolution, long-range forecasts. This is one that just tells you what the average has been over time when we've got a La Nina. Two more are coming up, which will give us maybe a better idea on what the reality of the situation could be for this late winter. First of all, rainfall has totally flatlined. Here's an interesting way of looking at this. This chart shows you what the average precipitation looks like in the big watersheds of Northern California. So we're not just looking at the Bay Area. We're looking at like the Sierra, where all the major reservoirs are. The arcing blue line shows you how average precipitation would go. That blue line shows you what this year has done, which is why I'm saying we flatlined. We did so well in October, and then again in December, you can see the two big jumps. November didn't do much. That flat, we kind of flatlined in November. And then for January and February, the flatline took over. Now, if we follow that line, and if we don't get any more precipitation here, we're going to come in well below average. What the last two winters look like? The two that really dug this drought for us. You see the two lines on there? Those are the last two winters. We're pretty much on par to do what the last two winters have done in terms of the total overall rain slash snow that we get in the real important watersheds to fill our reservoirs in Northern California. We're about to do three years in a row of a pretty poor performance that has dug us a pretty deep hole in terms of the drought. If you're wondering about the winter before those two, that one was huge. That's the winter that takes us back to the 2018-2019. Remember that one? It was big. It was the last really big winter that we had. In fact, you know what was different about that winter? It was an El Nino, the opposite of La Nina. It was the last time we were in an El Nino. And it certainly shows when you look at the way it panned out for us, much bigger rainfall totals. So using those two as our perspective, here's one more forecast to take us towards the end of winter. This one was put together by Scripps Institute. That's the organization that really focuses a lot on um, atmospheric rivers. They also do a good job of tracking sea surface temperatures, and, and that's the impacts from sea surface temperatures on the weather in general. Their forecast, taking us ahead here, going into March, April, and May, shows the same setup that we saw looking at the historic La Ninas. 
So here's one more maybe positive outlook for how we might get a little bit of rain here, according to this long range forecast for the last gasp of winter here. But those only look at La Nina. Here's the last map I want to show you on the long range forecast. This is a more involved climate model, which factors in La Nina, but also several other large scale atmospheric teleconnections at play. And when you look at more than just La Nina, which is important, but it's not the only deciding factor in all of this. When you take all of the computing power that we have to factor in the atmosphere as a whole, this one, taking a look at April, May, and June, shades California in the below average category. If we were going to bet on any one of these long range forecasts at this point, this is probably the more likely one because this does factor in La Nina, but it factors in everything else that we're able to factor in as well. So, there's our view of sea surface temperatures right now showing us there's some hope. We might get a little bit of help in the storm track if La Nina has a bigger factor in the long range. Uh, none of these has to play out exactly the way we've looked at them, but at least this is now the best information we've got to go on going forward for these last several weeks of winter if we're getting yet any help. Keep your fingers crossed. That's this week's Weather Extra. Paul Hagen will be back in next week with another one.